Hi, I'm Alex Archbull. I've been buying and selling antiques since I was a kid. Over the years, generations of our family have gotten involved in the business, and I'll search just about anywhere I can to find hidden treasures both big and small. I never know what I'll turn up next. It's about exploring new places, seeing new sights, and having fun. And even though sometimes I get over my head, we try and make things a little better along the way. This is Curiosity Inc. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. I am in the uh, quasi-tropical location, for Canada anyway, of Vancouver Island. I'm in uh, Victoria, BC. And while I'm out here, I'm visiting some antique shops, I'm doing a little exploration, and more importantly, um, I'm having fun. But today, we are gonna go inside of the Salvation Army thrift store. Um, I don't even know what end of town I'm in. Kinda near Langford? I don't know. I let the map program take me. I let I let my will go completely with the electronics and, and figure out where I should go next. But this is where I am, so let's go and see if we can find some treasures in the shop and see what kind of things they have on Vancouver Island. Let's go. All righty. Let's have a look. It's a pretty big location here. I kind of notice as soon as I walk in the door, they've got this guitar, an Aria classical guitar. We've got some depression glass looking bowls, trombone. So some interesting stuff. Some old toys. Ooh. $60 is too high on that. Hopefully that's not what they, maybe it's for all of them. Oh, it's for all the vintage toys, including the Tonka. I thought it was just for that one toy with 60. I guess that's not bad, including the Tonka truck there. So they've got a little variety of old toys, a little trainer amp. Always kind of curious to see what stuff gets traded in. 1993 Ghost Striker Jet GI Joe complete 30 bucks. Not bad, Furbies. Those are collectible now, too. An old Philco radio from the 30s, 200 bucks. And this is their little Star Wars selection here. Well, let's have a look around. So I'll have a look in some of the bags first and see household stuff, knives. I'm looking to see if maybe there's some pens, some nice fountain pens, perhaps. Some old toys, which aren't uh, as much as those, but we'll see. If I don't find anything good, I might have to put a cork in my spending today. Okay, I'm sort of looking around to see if they have any nice Pyrex. I saw in some of the antique stores here, they go for good money out here on the island. And that's the kind of thing that is likely to end up at a thrift shop because a lot of people don't really know to look at their Pyrex. I guess after these videos come out, more people will. <laughs> I don't see anything super duper old. Turtle soap dish or something. Okay. Well, that's a lot of beer would fit in that thing. Hobby Hills. I would imagine that probably was actually kind of expensive when you bought it at its source brand new. Went to Germany and I thought, oh, I'm gonna get myself a German beer stein when I was in Austria, just for the heck of it. But they were like 200 euros. And you could find them at thrift stores here in Canada for like, like that one's four bucks. But I don't, I would pass out if I drank that much beer. I'm a lightweight when it comes to that stuff. So no need for that. We'll keep browsing around. Drinking beer just ain't my racket. <clears throat> Well, I know it's not really an, an antique per se. It's older. Actually, that is an older one. That's a hummingbird feeder. Those would have been a little bit brighter red at one point to attract them because they're attracted to the bright colors of flowers, but it's kind of a cool piece. If I was actually um, back home, I would probably pick that up because Melissa would probably like to have that hanging from a tree. She's all about the birds, that gal. Now let's try the next aisle over and see what there is. 
Looks like stationary. Oh, look at all the patterns. What era are these? These look in the 1980s, 1990s era. Old Butterick patterns are actually... You could be Ralphie from uh, Christmas Story and make your kid a uh, bunny outfit. <laughs> hmm. So there are some vintage, like, uh, if you get back to the 40s or, or before, old patterns can be pretty collectible. So it doesn't look like any of these are quite that old. But here I am. If you would have told 15-year-old version of myself that someday I'd be looking for collectible patterns in a thrift store, I wouldn't have believed you. And yet here I am. Look, I could make my kids some new fancy outfits. I don't see anything super old there, but definitely worth having a look. Especially if you find old, like, butter at catalogs or pattern catalogs. Those are very collectible. I've always done well with that stuff. Oh, here's the stationery aisle. You know, I do actually look for, uh, well, not quite like this, but if it's a nice leather-bound binder, sometimes you come across those. Um... They're really nice to put, like, I, I organize all the receipts for the car projects I'm working on, and it just kind of makes it nice and tidy. When you have little things to organize with, so. Lots of pictures. Some original artwork there. Looks like it was, like, home decor store kind of artwork. And some spooky artwork. I don't know what that's all about. That might haunt a person's dreams. Oh, here's another guitar. AGS classical guitar, 50 bucks. And some of those strings are almost in tune, too. I feel like I'm getting into the uh, electronics department down here. We've got some sewing machines, toasters, lots of sewing machines, actually, light fixtures. Wonder if this is the type of thrift store you could actually find an old record player. Oh, there's a Kai AM FM tuner. It's not a bad piece of kit. A little Sony. That's more like a surround sound for your audio stuff. This is definitely a nice little tuner. Oh, that feels like good quality. Kai's actually not a bad brand, really. That's probably worth saving for somebody. But uh, it's more the amplifiers people look for so they can power up their turntables. And I don't see any amps here. But we'll keep on browsing and see what we come up with. Okay, well, you know we got to stop and look at the vinyl. And, of, of course, second album up, Nana Muscuri, the woman who must have sold a billion albums, and they all ended up in thrift stores. Eddie Arnold. You know... I never have really great luck finding records at thrift shops, but there was a time I went to a Goodwill in Edmonton and a um, radio station had shut down and they donated all their old vinyl. Oh, the amount of Jimi Hendrix and rock and roll and Rolling Stones, all from the 60s, the, the stuff that came out of there, good early jazz and blues. So I, I always kind of hold out a little bit of hope that maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to find, well, that's Everly Brothers. Borderline. <laughs> And I'm not a fan of Lowe, of Manilow, not so much, just Neil Diamond. But maybe, just maybe I'll come across some cool, good albums. Lawrence Welk. But for the most part, it's always the same kind of stuff that gets filtered through here. They leave behind the classical, the Lawrence Welk, and the, uh, the less popular stuff. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know always pays to have a look because you just never know when there's gonna be that one thing in there that you really need to have but certainly not another than Miss Curry I nothing against her singing or anything it's just her her stuff is everywhere when it comes to uh, thrift shops well we'll keep moving along well I left a little bit empty-handed from this shop today they had a few cool things in that showcase but they were definitely full-on retail but I was told by a person who's shopping around in it. There's actually a much bigger one just about 10 minutes down the road. So we're gonna head on down there, see if maybe uh, the second shop has a little bit more variety. Okay, thrift store number two. 
It's a little smaller than uh, the main one downtown, but they, uh, it was the closest one to me, so I thought I'd give it a try. We got a bunch of pins here. I'm just checking these because sometimes they are actually solid silver. Occasionally they're 10 karat gold, so a little Olympic pin there. You'd be surprised. Sometimes you look at the back and it says 10 karat and people just, you know, have the same price for next to nothing. So it pays to look at the marks on the back of these pins. But uh, normally you're going to find a pin that's actually silver or gold if it's like a, an award pin or something that was given out. That's Thrifty's Foods, Commonwealth Games. Hmm. Kind of interesting. Anyway, so some pins in that area little ornaments it's one of those little um, clay soldiers like they have uncovered in China by the thousands can't imagine how much work that would have been to build an entire army out of clay soldiers neat little piece though I mean as a as a decorative item that's kind of cool he's got a little hand broken off though unfortunately but neat item Let's see what else do the uh, Routine Pyrex check. It's kind of interesting little dish there. Four dollars and ninety nine cents. See if it's got any kind of markings on the bottom of it. Yeah, it does. I don't know how to decipher it, but that's kind of a cool, cool little piece there for the price. O octagon shaped, or is it hexagon? I should say. They've got a sort of color organized: pinks and purples, coppers and stuff. Let's keep on browsing. Gosh, look at this thing. It's a giant Batman that shoots rockets and stuff. I guess you put your action figure in there and you've got this massive, <laughs> that is like gotta be one of the biggest sort of action figure things I think I've ever seen in a thrift shop. Different for sure. It looks like a uh, kind of a robot almost. It's kind of neat. And as it turns out, quite valuable too, worth over $160 online. Well, two stores down and uh, no such luck, but it was kind of fun to do a little scouting around and see what there is. It seems like um, the newer clothes are what people are after here on the island, um, newer utensils and stuff. Not a whole lot of collectibles, but that's okay. Um, you just never know until you go and look. So a few fun little things. The prices seem all right though. So I mean, if you're looking for a book or a shirt or something like that, the prices seem very fair. So um, if you're ever out on the island, stop at the Salvation Army thrift stores and you're likely to get yourself some kind of deal. As for me though, there wasn't anything for me to buy today, but I guess that's how it goes sometimes. But anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. <laughs> I don't know why words are hard right now. I must be getting tired. It's probably about that time that I go and get some supper and get something to eat because um, I think I'm losing my mind. <laughs> anyway, guys, have a wonderful day. We'll see y'all soon. Don't forget to subscribe and bye for now. Bye, everybody.